Chapter 19 Jag slid a stool from under the tall round table. Star sat down and set her purse on the table. Thank you. You're welcome. He climbed on a neighboring stool, propped his elbow on the table, and rested his chin on the heel of his hand. He watched as she peeled the white sticker off the rolled napkin to free her silverware. She folded the napkin and set it and the fork to her left. Grinning, he slid her fork and napkin to her right, waggled his brows, and winked at her. Her eyes narrowed and she slid her napkin and fork back to her left. Creature of habit? I suppose I am. Stunning. Thin, pouty lips, tight ass, and solid D cups. But that's so boring. According to you, maybe. He swiveled her stool and wedged her knee between his thighs. What's the last thing you did that made your heart race? He leaned closer. That made the air in your lungs disappear. She leaned back. Crazy is not for me. Microwaves, silly putty, slinkies, potato chips, play-doh, penicillin. What do they all have in common? I'm sure you're going to tell me. They were discovered accidentally because someone was willing to think outside the box. He tapped the side of his head. Think crazy. She straightened her posture. What does any of this have to do with where I place my fork and napkin? He smiled. Absolutely nothing. Raising his hand high over his head, he flagged the waitress. Ready to order? Yes, I'm starving. He winked. Good, me too. The waitress approached. What can I get you? Jags gave Star a nod. Ladies first. I'll have a chicken Caesar salad. Anything to drink? The waitress asked. He winked. Get crazy. She avoided eye contact with him, her focus remaining on the waitress. I'll have an iced tea. Hi. Jags grabbed the waitress's hand and they shook. I'm Jags. You are? I'm Casey. Good to meet you, Casey. He glanced at his open menu. I'll have the potato skins and the volcanic cheeseburger. But if I could get the onion rings instead of fries, that'd be great. And he looked up. Do you have any soup? No. No matter. I'll just have, heck, just give me a side of fries and a Jack Daniels and Coke. Just so I have this right, you order potato skins, the volcanic cheeseburger, onion rings, a side of fries, and a Jack and Coke. He closed his menu. Perfect. Oh, make that cheese fries. You're not really going to eat all of that, are you? Star asked when the waitress left. I'll share. She laughed. Where do you put it? I get a lot of exercise. With his forearm resting on the table, he leaned toward her and grasped her hand. How come I can't read you? She frowned. I'm not following. Head tilted to the side, he focused on her. Blank. He shook his head. What's wrong with you? Star pulled her hand from his grasp. Where's Cam and Maggie? A woman walked by, long mousy hair, tight jeans, and a low-cut fitted top. Star glared at her, her mouth curling into a pout. Do you know her? Star fidgeted with her napkin and fork. No. His eyes narrowed. Why do you say it like that? Like what? Like the idea of knowing her is repulsive. She let out a huff. She's white trash. Jags sat back, his fingers flexed on his thighs. 
What exactly is white trash? And how do you know that's what she is if you don't know her? Just look at her. She had to have smothered herself in grease to get those jeans on and look at her makeup. Somebody needs to teach her that less is more. 10 to 1, she doesn't have a job. If I had to take a guess, I'd say she has a child and doesn't know who the father is. She probably brings him or her shopping in a diaper and no shoes. And a hundred bucks says she lives in a trailer with three cars in the backyard and most likely none of them run. Jags leaned forward. You got all this by looking at her? When Star said nothing, he said, Do you think my brother is white trash? Her smooth complexion crinkled in distaste. I don't even know your brother. Cam has no job, and there are two non-running vehicles in his backyard. He doesn't live in a trailer, but almost, and since he doesn't have any kids, I can't say if he dressed them to take them shopping or not. She grimaced. You mean any kids that he knows of? Jags gave her a tight smile. Haven't you ever heard the cliche, don't judge a book by its cover? He took a breath. What kind of person would you say Cam is, hypothetically speaking, of course? You're getting upset with me. I think we should change the subject. She glanced around the restaurant. Where's our food? He patted her hand. I'm pretty good at reading people, and I'm fascinated by your ability to do the same. I won't get upset. I sincerely would like to know what you see when you look at my brother. She cocked her head, conveying her doubt. You won't get mad? He wrapped his hand around hers. I promise. Well, I'd say... She crossed her arms over her chest. I can't do this. Let's talk about something else. Jags sucked in a breath. He slowly released it, forcing his posture to a more relaxed position. Why don't you tell me about your boyfriend? Well, his name is Ty. He's a construction supervisor for- I didn't ask for his resume. She groaned. What then? What do you like about him? I love him. Love is a word many use carelessly, never understanding the depth of their proclamation. What's your point? Jags clasped his hands on the table, fingers laced and smile genuine. What do you love about him? Lots of things. She grabbed Jags's roll of silverware and removed the sticker that held the utensils together. He's very considerate of others. She placed the fork and napkin to his left. He's patient, understanding, funny, romantic. Wow, sounds like a keeper. He snagged both napkins, crunched them in his hand, and slid the napkins and forks to the other side of the round table. What was that for? You were telling me how terrific Ty is. He tilted his head and looked into her gaped mouth. Great tonsils. Her mouth snapped shut. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. What do you love about her? I like her sense of humor. I like her honesty. I love her ass. Star frowned. You're making me uncomfortable again. Could you refrain from being so crude? He scooted his stool closer. I'll try, but I wasn't trying to be crude. I was answering honestly. Don't ask if you don't want to hear the answer. She panned the restaurant. Our food is taking forever. Did you know... By touching a person, I can sense the depth and color of a person's soul. I can see the parts of a person that lie deep beneath their subconscious. His gaze swept over the length of her body. He grasped her wrist and looked under the table so he could consider the whole package. Was she some kind of abomination? He couldn't read not one damn thought. 
Her mind was a black hole of nothing. She continued to pan the room. Hell, he didn't need his sixth sense to sum her up. Want to know what I've read in you? She glared at him. No, you take the safe route. You like things predictable and simple. You're with your boyfriend because it's comfortable, easy. Not one strand strayed from the tightly balled hair at the nape of her neck. She must have used an entire can of hairspray to get it mannequin perfect. Her nails were painted a pale shade of pink, her complexion concealed with plastic precision. Do you ever let your hair down? Her rigid lips conveyed blatant contempt. Why do you care? No need to get nasty, just curious. He pulled a strand of her hair loose. Oops, he covered his mouth. One got away call the Pentagon. She tugged the loose hair behind her ear. At least I have a hairstyle. Her eyes darted to his head. What cut is that? Scooby-Doo? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you even know what a hairstylist is? Or for that matter, a hairbrush? Jags felt his face flush. He took pride in that not many people existed in this world he didn't love, or that didn't love him. But all he felt for this woman was contempt. Perhaps a small part of him was attracted to her, but that was before she opened her mouth. You know what your problem is? I'm sure you're going to tell me. You need a good fuck. She had turned him into someone he didn't recognize. Lewd and crass were simply not his style. What's your boyfriend's name again? Her brows knitted. None of your business. Well. None of your business is obviously not getting the job done, because nobody can be as uptight as you are if they've been fucked inside out. His hands flew to her head, tugging and yanking, unshackling her hair from its cage. Leaning back, he admired his masterpiece. There, now we match. Her jaw dropped. Tears filled her eyes. You're such a... Uh, searching for the right word, sugar? While you're thinking, let me tell you what you are. You're an uptight, pretentious, frigid snob. He hopped off the stool, slid his wallet from his back pocket, and dropped two $20 bills on the table. I'm out of here. <laughs>